All right, guys, welcome back to robotics. Today, we're going to go a little bit deeper into uh, working with a potentiometer and then reading the values from that. So, so last week, we were able to control what was printed out to the computer screen using the potentiometer dial right here. Now, if you notice, uh, if you remember, we went whenever you change the turn the dial, you went from the value of zero to uh, 1024. So I have my uh, the code right here. We have a uh, integer variable called potentiometer, and we just say potentiometer equals analog read of a zero because this uh, white wire right here we've connected to a zero, and then we just uh, print that out. And actually, this this is incorrect here. It shouldn't say voltage. It should say potentiometer. Okay. We'll look at the voltage later. So, and then we have the delay here to make sure that it doesn't um, uh, keep keep asking too many for too many uh, serial uh, commands, and then it, which causes the website to crash. So remember, we always want to put delay 100, at least uh, delay 100. It could be a little larger as well, uh, but at least uh, 100 for the delay. All right, let's upload this just so we're all on the same page. And what I should see is a, a value that goes from 0 to 124. Okay, good. All right, see, so one, uh, or yeah, one, uh, 1023, excuse me. So 1023 is the highest. Go all the way down. And 0 is the lowest. Okay, so what I want to do right now is I want to. I want to be able to display a more useful uh, value because we know that the Arduino or the Noggin, whatever you want to call it, has a high voltage of 5 volts. So actually what's going on when I, when I go to 1023, it's actually seeing 5 volts on A0. And when I go to 0, it's actually seeing Z, 0 volts. So how do I translate it? It's like I have to uh, change the number so that when it says 1023, I actually see five here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of math here uh, just to show us how to, how to do that. Okay, so going to the whiteboard, uh, let's, let's take a look at what's going on. Okay, so we know that we have our dial Right, and right now, when I turn it all the way one way, I get zero. When I turn all the way the other way, I get 1023. Okay, so that's what I see right now. But what I want, and I'm going to put it in red, is that when it's zero, I want to see zero because that's zero volts. But when I go to 1023, what I actually want to see is 5 volts. All right, so we're going to have to do some math to convert this number to 5 volts. And then if we do that correctly, all the numbers in between will also work out. All right, so one way I like to think about this is that this little, this circle, this half circle, or kind of, it's kind of like a half circle, is divided up into uh, 1,024 slots. It's, I say uh, 1,024, uh, not 1,023, is because uh, it starts at, at number zero, okay? So if this started at number one, it would be 1,023 slots. But because it starts at number zero, it's actually 1,024 slots. What I mean by that is if I actually drew these out, I'm not gonna draw that many tick marks, but so this is kind of like a rough sketch. But there are 1,024 uh, slots here. So as I'm moving along here, A0 tells me like how many segments I'm, I'm along that, um, that I've covered, all right? So what I mean by that, if I'm halfway through here, like this, 
that means that I have gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, like all the way to around 512, because that's about half, halfway here. Okay, so at this point, I've gone through 512 slots. Um, and then again, if I go all the way through, I've gone through all the slots. Uh, so it's 1,023 at this point. So how do I kind of put this uh, into numbers? Um, I'm going to write a formula here. So we're going to say the voltage, which is what we want is equal to size of slot, which like, again, these little, what's the size of these little slots here, okay? Times number of slots, okay? What I mean by that is if we turn the dial to like right here, it would be 512. That would be the number of slots. Now the size of the slot is how big is each little slot, okay? And once we have that, we, we're talking about voltage, so what you do is you put in the max voltage. Okay, now for us, the max voltage is 5V. All right, and you can kind of think about why that works, um, why, why these numbers cause it to, to work, but for now, we just know, uh, I just want you to know that we have these three things, um, that's gonna help us find the voltage. Okay, so let's see if this um, kind of works out here. All right, so if, uh, let's see, then we have equal, what's the size of the slot? The size of each one of these slots is actually five divided by, sorry, not five, is one divided by 1,024, okay? That's the size of each little slot here, one 1,024. And then what is the number of slots? Well, that is analog read A0, okay? So when we read from uh, the analog, that is actually telling us how far along on our dial are we, right? Are we halfway, which would be 512 slots, or are we all the way, which is 1023, uh, 1023 slots? Okay. And then what's the max voltage? Well, we know five volts is actually the, the highest times five. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and try to program this. We can actually do some math within our program uh, to see if that works. Okay, so let me pause here. Okay, so I have my uh, code here and then also my formula here so that we can kind of look at the formula as we code. All right, so one second here, let me, let me do this. All right, so what we wanna do is start this formula. So right now we have potentiometer equals analog read zero. So we have this part. So what we wanna do is, I'm gonna first times it by five volts. So a couple things, and I want us to kind of follow carefully here, all right? So right now the potentiometer, we have it as an integer type for the variable. I'm gonna change this to float. The reason it needs to be float is because this formula is gonna have 
uh, uh, decimals in it, and the int type can't handle decimals. The reason it's decimal, because look, 1 divided by 1024, that is way less than 1. Um, so you're going to have a decimal. And so whenever you're working with decimals, you have to change it to a float, change everything into a float. All right, so first we did that. We have float potentiometer. Now, this is still OK. So potentiometer equals analog read A0. All right. Let's then do uh, another line, potentiometer equals potentiometer times 5. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking whatever potentiometer is, which at this point is analog re read 0. I'm taking it and multiplying it by 5. All right. So at this point, I have done this part, and I've also done this part, right? So let's go back here. So I have only one more thing to do. I need to do this divide by 1024. So I'm going to say potential. Actually, you know what? Before I even do that, let's just see what serial print LN says now. Okay, so it should be a larger number because I took potentiometer and I times it by five. So let me upload. And hopefully I should get a larger number now. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, good. You see, it's a decimal now, and it goes to zero still, because zero times five is still zero. But now, as I turn it all the way, I get 5115, which is five times the maximum. Okay, so this is working so far. So this gets always like check, check a little bit as you're doing it. So our formula is like halfway done. Let's, let's go back, let's disconnect. And we have to do one more thing. Looking at the code uh, formula here, we need to divide by 1024. So let's do another operation here, another math operation. Potentiometer equals potentiometer divided by 1024. Oh, I want to spell that correctly. OK. So what I'm doing now is taking whatever potentiometer is at this point, and I'm going to divide it by 1,024. All right. At this point, once I have that, then I also have this part done. And I have all three, one, two, three, all three parts of my equation done. And I should be able to get the voltage. OK, so let's see what happens. It should go from 0 to 5 now. Let's upload. Connect. Great. All right, then I'm going to do the monitor. Check it out. Zero one way. And I turn it the other way. I get five the other way. Perfect. So now I've translated zero to five. So if you didn't, if it didn't quite make sense as to why this formula works, that's okay for now. Uh, the the main point is that I wanted you to see that there's a certain formula that allows us to translate, uh, or another word is to to decode uh, the the value from analog read into voltage, okay? And then I also wanted to show you that you can do math one operation at a time, line by line, through, through this, okay? So let's do some challenges here. Challenge uh, 
number one is display voltage zero to five on serial monitor using formula. Okay, so that's the uh, exactly using the, the same formula that we have here and that we also have right here. All right, now let's do the next part. We're going to do this together. We're going to um, let's see here display angle from 0 to 180 on serial monitor. All right, now why do I want to go all of a sudden go from 0 to 180? The reason is, if you remember, the uh, servo motor can go from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. And what I want to do is as I turn the dial, I want it to um, be able to control the full range on my motor. Okay? So we've already done the 0 to 5 for the voltage. So from 0 to 180, we can use the same formula, except we just have to change the number a little bit. So let, let's, let's take a look. So going back here, we have our nifty thing here. So it's, everything's going to be pretty much the same, I think, right? So uh, this, the red was for voltage. And uh, I'm going to use green here for angle. So imagine we want to go zero degrees. That would be zero. So when I go all the way on this side, it should go to zero degrees. And all the way here, I'm talking about degrees, not angles now. I want it to be all the way on the other side, which would be 180 degrees. So going back to my little nifty formula here, I have the size of the slot. The size of the slot is still 1024 because that hasn't changed, right? It's still every slot is still the same size. I'm still using the same dial, so that's all the same. Analog read A0, I'm going to leave that the same too. I'm still looking at analog read 0. I'm still looking at this uh, white wire here. The only thing has changed is this 5V. We're not using 5V anymore, right? We don't want that. We're going to be looking at the max. It's not the max voltage, so we're going to change that as well. It's now the max angle, because we're talking about angles. And what's the max angle? 180. So once we have the formula, um, we can do different things with it pretty easily. So let's go ahead and change our program to match this. Okay, moving this over, making sure that you can see it, okay. All right, then going back here, so let's see, potentiometer starting from here, analog read A0, that's, that's fine. Potentiometer times five before for voltage, but it's not times five now, it's times 180. And then over here, potentiometer divided by 1024, that's still the same. I'm going to leave that. Okay. Now I should, it should go from 0 to 180. Let's, uh, let's try. Upload. All right. So the maximum should be 180 now. Let's... Let's see what happens here. Very cool. I go all the way down, it's zero. I go, I, I'm changing it slowly, slowly. I keep going. 179.82. So it's 
It's slightly off. There's a little air there, but that is good enough. I'm going to say that's good enough for now. Okay, so this will be the next challenge is get it. Uh, when you turn it, it goes 0 to 179.82. So I'm going to disconnect that. Okay, and the reason there's an error is because it's some decimal and there's some rounding uh, differences there. But you know, we're that's good enough for for right now. All right, now the next step is let's control the motor, okay, based on what the potentiometer is is saying. So how are we going to do that? Well. All we need to do is add some co code, right? So let's, uh, how do we get our servo motor moving? Well, we need a hashtag include servo.h library, okay? And then we need to set up our servo. I think it's still pin nine. I need to make sure here. This one, yeah. Yeah, pin nine, okay, so uh, let's create our servo base motor object, and then I'm gonna say base motor dot attach nine, okay, and Let's see here. Now, if that's set up, we can just take potentiometer because potentiometer now goes from zero to 180. So I can just put potentiometer, this variable, inside of the servo command. I'll show you. Base motor dot right poten geometer okay so it's going to do all this math right here and then it's going to take whatever number which is going to be 0 to 180 and put it inside base motor and so it's going to keep looping so as I turn the dial potentiometer changes and thus changes the angle of the motor hopefully let's let us try let us try this okay I'm gonna make my little screen a little bigger right here so that you can see it. Okay, let's upload. Okay, okay. I'm turning right now. Check it out. is controlling it. So we wouldn't have been able to do this if we didn't know how to um, translate analog to, to angles. Very cool. And if you want to, we can look at the monitor too. It should be showing. There we go. Zero. And check it out. It's It matches my... Uh, my plate, see I'm at zero right now, it goes to zero. If I go to 90, pretty close, 90, and then I go to 135, pretty cool. And then 180. There we go, there we go. So I'm gonna disconnect for a second. So challenge three, control the base servo motor using the dial. All right, there we go. So now we're able to control one motor. I'll give you a challenge. Extra credit. Control 
two motors at the same time using the dial. So you have one dial, I want you to move two motors at the same time. So I think that would be an interesting, um, kind of fun, fun little challenge. If you don't get there, that's okay. We will uh, do that together. All right, there you go. So today we did a little math. Uh, we used the math to convert the analog read value into voltage. And then once we figured that out, we uh, figured out how to then use that to translate analog voltage to um, angles for the servo motors, and then we use that to then control the servo motor. All right, that's it for now. Uh, we will talk more later. Talk to you later.